ensures that its systems function properly and there's no evidence of inappropriate activity by the CME or any of its members. Third, the NYSE ARC exchange, the electronic market operated by NYSE, began experiencing communication issues, at least with NASDAQ, that hindered electronic linkages with other markets. The other exchanges were forced to route around ARCA. Again, there's no evidence of inappropriate activity at ARCA or any other problem, but its liquidity became less available to the entire market at a critical time. Four, simultaneously with ARCA, the NYSE hybrid market began reporting multiple liquidity replenishment points and gap quotes that impacted trading in the NYSE listed stocks. Under SEC regulation NMS, NYSE is permitted to issue LRPs, but this functioned as a signal to other markets that NYSE was exper experiencing order imbalances or difficulties. This in turn allowed other markets to stop routing orders to NYSE and to trade elsewhere, and that's exactly what happened. NASDAQ and other markets routed around NYSE as Reg NMS contemplated. Even ARCA, NYSE's own electronic market, stopped routing orders to NYSE. NASDAQ's ongoing analysis indicates that May 6 was triggered by a confluence of unusual events, including events outside the equity markets. We continue to investigate, but we have not located a single smoking gun that caused or fully explains these events. I would note also that so-called high-frequency traders have appear to have played no distinguishing role in this event. They behaved in line with other liquidity providers and liquidity takers during that day. The SEC is engaged in an important review of market structure and the policies around high-frequency trading. We recommend that Congress allow that review to run its course before considering additional policy reactions in this area.